everybody. Uh, my next guest is the incredibly funny actress from the wonderful new Armando Iannucci show, Avenue 5. I am delighted to speak to Susie Nakamura. Hi. I'm buttoning as you speak. So okay. I don't know what happened. Oh, no. I'm buttoning. You're, you're buttoning. What buttoning. The? Oh, my God. <laughs> it, ca it came undone. <laughs> Whatever. You I good? Mean. Are you good? I mean, I can, I can, ho I can like hold that. Yeah, I'll hold that. I'll stand here and guard you so no one can see if you if you have it. I think we've got, we've got it under control. If you can take, it's not broken. We good? Yeah. Okay. My next Great guest is the timing. incredibly funny actress Susie Nakamura. <laughs> Starting over for you. Start over. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having Congrats me. Congrats. Do I sit back? Does this look good? What's comfortable for you? That's no, not very comfortable. Whatever keeps the button buttoned, I think, mm -hmm. right? The hardest button star. Mm -hmm. um, I love this show. I love Armando Iannucci. This is your second time working with him, right? You did yes. the episodes of Veep. I did Veep, um, yeah. What was it like working with him then? Did it feel like you had clicked and that he might bring you back for something, or was it a surprise? Uh, it, was a, it was a surprise. Um, I loved working with him. It was, it's such a different process. And I think if you've ever spoken to anyone who, who's worked with him, it's, a, it's very much, for, at least for me, it's very close to theater. Mm. Meaning, like you, he gives you sort of a script, and then you rehearse that. But then you do tweaks, and you, there's changes, and then there's a new script, and you maybe even work off of that new script, find new jokes, you know. So it's it's it, it sort of evolves, and it's super collaborative, and it sounds like sometimes we're improvising, but we're really not. It's written through improvisation sometimes, but most of the time we're just saying. What what is what was eventually scripted? Right. By the time you get to set, it's fairly refined. Yes, but yeah. then I mean, when I did Veep, it, there was a, a script, and then we went into Julia's dressing room and do, it worked on it some more. Found like three other jokes while she was getting made up, and then went in there, and then you know probably found another couple jokes while we were there too. How did, did you start in comedy? I did initially. Well, what was your, Well, how did you first start? Um, I'm from Second City. Second City. Yeah. Okay. And so you were doing. I imagine you were doing sketch or something prior to Oops. that, and then went to Second City. Yeah. I mean, I, I originally wanted to do like what they call straight theater. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't even you know, say it without laughing, I, I know. don't know if you can. So that's telling. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I mean, as a kid, you're like, I'm just, I'm probably gonna do a lot of Shakespeare, and I'm probably gonna be a big, you know, that. And then I, I, I ended up taking like an improv class, not even in a proper improv class, but this guy that I know that was teaching a workshop, like in the lobby, not even in the theater, in the lobby of the theater, because that's the only space he could get. <laughs> and I, I just loved it. And it, was, it seemed nuts to me. Um, and I think I would be too afraid to do it now, right? Because the idea of doing anything without a net as an adult is terrifying. But I think I was young enough to just be like, yeah, this is this seems fun <laughs> to go on stage with nothing. Um, and then I was I auditioned for the Second City, just thinking I could get like a scholarship to their training program. And <clears throat> out of high school or out of college? Uh, I was in college. You were in college. Yeah. And you auditioned for Second City. Yeah. Wow. And what was that? What was it like being at Second City at that time? It, it's the, it's hands down the greatest job in the world. And I, they call it the Harvard of comedy, and they call it a bunch of stuff. But I mean, it's it's it, it's the you're working with the nicest, funniest, most collaborative people in the world, in my opinion. Yourself included. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> you know it's it's you can't kind of you can't be an asshole and an improviser i don't think mm. um not at first not at first you work your way up to that <laughs> uh it's aspirational <laughs> because you know because the essence of improv is trust mm -hmm. right and giving and 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 helping someone and making someone else look good so if you don't have that in your personality i don't think you could be successful at it so i was surrounded by people that i felt that were like that you know, and then and the whole idea behind ensemble is you have to make everyone else look good, right? So if everyone is doing that, then everyone is elevated, everyone shines. Does it feel like that on Avenue 5 as well? Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Right. Um, and it's actually a style, ensemble acting is a, is a style of acting that you learn in Chicago. So, but I know like, and I don't know if anyone, I'm looking at the cast right here. I don't, I'm assuming no one 
since no one is really like Chicago style acting that anyone learned it, but like they do it instinctively. Like Josh, I have a lot of scenes with Josh and he just, you know, he's from theater. So he like, you could tell he's giving in a scene. He's trying to make your joke better, right? right. And, and everyone is trying to make, make it better. What is, what is ensemble style acting? What is, the, what, what is that practice? How do they teach it? Um, it's basically like, I mean, it's hard to, I guess it's hard to, to, to describe, but it's, it's especially for comedy because you're doing a joke, right? right. So you never, you never want to hurt someone's joke. Um, you never want to, and you want to help the timing and you want to help the rhythm. And you, it's, it's almost like, I don't want to say straight man because that's, um, that's difficult as well. But you're basically like um, giving the focus. You're giving focus to every to everyone else on stage, but everyone else is also giving you focus. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. Did you think of yourself as a funny person prior to taking improv, or did you discover that <laughs> you had the ability to make people laugh when you when when you were doing that? I I know I have the ability to make people laugh. I I don't think I'm funny. If that makes a sen if that makes sense, I don't consider myself funny. If that, I don't know. I, it's a coping mechanism to be, to be completely honest. To not consider yourself funny. No, it's a coping. Me comedy is a coping mechanism, and I think a lot a lot of people would say that, right? And right. acting in general, I think people, are, most actors are very shy, or they're, you know, reserved. But when they, but when you tell them to be someone else, then they can open up and and be a different person. It, and I, I, that's not rare, is it? No, that's not rare at all. I just think Second City is a fairly difficult thing to get into. It is in many ways. Yeah. Uh, uh, some of the best have come out of there. And I think uh, you have to be pretty funny. I mean, you are, you're not just performing when you're there. You're writing as well, aren't you? Or yeah, you're, you're right. Well, you're improvising and you're writing through improv. Um, yeah, but I also think comedy is you get a laugh when you tell the truth, right? Or someone recognizes something or, or thinks, you're someone, thinks you're someone they know, right? It's that recognition yeah. laugh or that universal laugh. So uh, I think if you just, if the more honest you are, then that's when, that's when you're gonna get the really good laughs. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense, yeah, yeah. 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 And you can feel, especially with live shows, so all the Second City shows were live and you can kind of feel it. Like you ride the audience like a wave and you can kind of feel them when they're with you and then you take that and you try and, you know, elevate that and make it more. How did you translate that into working on set? Did that take time for you to be comfortable with it or was it a fairly seamless transition? You could compartmentalize the two very easily. It was, uh, it was a good transition for me because I started in multi-camera comedy right. and that is sort of a hybrid Thing where you are doing it in front of a live audience. It's it's three camera, which means it's very stage like, right? It's there's there's um there's a fourth wall here. <laughs> That's why all the what was the show the first show? The first one I did was called Common Law, and it was a multi camera comedy with uh, Second City's Dave Pesquese and uh, Peter Marietta was was on the writing staff. So there was some familiar faces, wow. and Carlos Jacot, who's also from Chicago. Who was the star of the show? It was Greg, he's a stand-up, oh, shoot, this is like a quiz. <laughs> I'm, gonna sh I'm gonna kick myself later because he, he was a fantastic, well-known stand-up. Alana, are you on your phone right now, Googling it? <laughs> Greg Geraldo. Oh, Greg Geraldo, I right, Greg Geraldo. I just remembered his name. Yes, of course, Greg, Greg Geraldo. Geraldo. It was his show. Wow. Yeah. And uh, were you a reoccurring character or was it initially? I was. I was, um, uh, I went in to audition for a, a, a lawyer. It was, a, it took place in a law office and the, the character's Got name it. was, yeah, common law. Uh, the character's name was Peter. <laughs> love sitcoms. I just <laughs> love it. They're just like, you can't write the jokes about them. They just do it. It's common great. Common law. Yeah. Uh, I auditioned for a, a guy named Peter. And I, uh, this is what, 20 years ago? It was like, it was a long time ago. You're right out of Second City. I'm right at out this of Second point. City. And there, there were just, at that time, there weren't really ro funny roles for women. It was all the roles were men roles, and then the women were sort of supporting. Of course. Right? Oh, honey. Right. 
after the guy makes a joke. So I said to my, did I have an agent at the time? I don't even think I had an agent. But um, I, I just, I thought the role was funny. He was f funny. And so I showed up and it was all guys. And I was like, oh my God, what am I doing here? I've made a huge mistake. This is really stupid. And I felt embarrassed going in there. Um, but I, I got it. <laughs> So they changed the name to Susie. Oh, so for my, you. Yeah, so oh. the, my first credit is, I think it's one of my first credits, yeah. I'm playing Susie. What a world, and I, I imagine it's still happening. Of course it is, but uh, you go, as a woman, you go into something like Second City or like UCB mm -hmm. or, or you're, you're a writer on The Lampoon or something, and then you go out into the sort of real entertainment world, mm -hmm. and you're just, there's just nothing for you to use those muscles that, that, that you built up over the course of time. As you said, that's changed, but that's 20, changed. 30 years ago, I mean, what an... In yeah, but here's the other thing. I was, you know, I did theater in Chicago. I was at Second City for almost five years. Uh, I didn't know any better. Of course. So I came out here saying, like, I can do anything. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that naivete helped me because I didn't didn't think um, that I was limited to certain types of roles or anything like that. Right. And I was lucky enough to have an agent who, you know, eventually uh, I got an agent. Uh, <laughs> who, Good for you, Susie. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and they, they, they believed in me enough to send me out for, I went out for a lot of men's roles in the beginning. Really? Yeah, because it was the only ones that were funny. Oh, wow. And would you find that often they would, they, I mean, you would have to get the role for them to change it, but they, they would be open to it? Or did you find sometimes you would go in and they'd be like, what are you doing here? I never got that. Good. I never got that. Um, but, you know, I, I, there were no roles for whatever, an ingenue or young Asian woman who does comedy. Yeah. There were zero. So they had to submit me for other roles. Um, otherwise, still, I would never go out. There's still very few I would, I would imagine. Yes, but they're more open right. to, you know, different types of actors to fill that role. Right. And so you almost have to ignore the gender, the age, the whatever, you know, and just think of, like, what, what is this character saying? Can I believably say these words? And, uh, yeah, I, I, did another, I did another pilot um, that was written for a 40-year-old Caucasian male named Robbie. And I got it, and they cha they kept the name Robbie. So, <laughs> did they rewrite the character? No, to it, was was guy, like, it was a guy that was kind of like flirting with all the women in the office. Amazing. And I just did it that way, and they yeah. they kept the lines, except I was saying like, yeah. So what? Uh, so what's her story? She's single. What? They just. Did you ever find that there would be like you'd be reading like, well, this he. He calls me him right here, so we have to change. Did they at least change things like that? The pronoun. Yeah, yeah, they changed. They changed the pronoun. Um, so you're you're in Julia Louis Dreyfus's uh, green room, and they're, you're going over the script with her and the writers. Yeah, and Armando's there, and, and Arma you know the other writers. Right, and, and we're just kind of running it. And are you comfortable like throwing out jokes that you're thinking of in that moment as well, or are you just I kind of performing out one, it for them? I think I threw out one joke that I thought the timing would. You know, it was more of a timing thing of what if we said this simultaneously, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that was really fun. It didn't make, I don't think it made the final episode, but it's just sort of fun to work with people. Who, you know, it's just like Second City where you're just kind of like collaborating, throwing stuff out, running it. What does it sound, what does the rhythm sound like, you know, now that we're all in the same room running it. And, and you do the same thing on Avenue 5. Yes, the great thing about Avenue 5 is they have a, uh, a script and we have two days to rehearse each episode. Wow. So we get up, very theater-like, everyone's, the, everyone's there. It's not like just you two, now you two, everyone's there. And people jump up and, and we'll be like, I'll be the waiter, <laughs> swear to God. <laughs> you know, or I'll be the blah, blah, blah. And you script in hand and we run it. The writers are all lined up against the wall. So they're working out something separate than you're working out, right? Because you're working out, am I mad at him? Am I blah, blah, blah. While they're working out, 
well, how do we get them in there? If they're coming from the engine room, why would they come to this room, you know? And then the collaboration of like, oh, if you want them to come, if we should go to the bridge, then why don't I say, uh, you know, I need your help, right? So that it's very, I don't know. There's three things happening, our stuff, their stuff, and then the stuff together. And then we, and then by, you know, so then they make the changes. And then by the time we shoot it, all those problems have been resolved. All the problems that you usually get when you show up to set, which is like, how do we get them? Why are they coming into the engine room? <laughs> it's already been it's already been solved. Um, what do you think of your character in Avenue Five? She's sort of a, um, a, t a t she's 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 tight. She's she's very high, type A, type controlling. A. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure, yeah. Um, but like a great Armando Iannucci character, she, she thinks she has so much more together than she actually does. Yes, right? And it's all our perceptions of who we are versus who 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 we really are. We're all fools. We're all fools. Yeah. <laughs> and n n all of us don't know what we're doing, no matter mm -hmm. what face we put to the world. Um, yeah, I like that idea that she um, that she got to this level Right, where she's basically like the CEO, or at least the right hand man of this billionaire, um, and he trusts her with everything. And I, I worked with Josh before on another show called Back to You with Patricia Heaton and Kelsey Grammer. Can I guess what Back to You was about? Mm -hmm. Ready? Something about going back to school. And uh, uh, no. No. Back to you. Uh, someone about comes who, back from the dead. Think and about who says back to you. Oh, oh, of course. So it's about like a weatherman. Yeah, it's right. About, it's about a new, it was about a news station. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So an office <laughs> comedy about a news station. Yes. Back to you. Yes. And I believe Josh was the, I think Josh was the weatherman. And Ty Burrell was the sports guy, I think. Oh, cool. Was it? I don't know. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but that's how we met. Okay. Josh and I. And so you, the two of you had worked together before. Yes. And, uh, but this is a completely different kind of envir work environment, right? Yes, and I don't think Armando knew we knew each other when we got cast. But he's very, but, but um, uh, right away I, I, I knew that Josh and I could play off of each other. Like once we knew who these characters were, and that took a little bit of time too because, you know, they just exist on the page until you're, you know, in full hair and makeup and wardrobe. And that's a big part of it, too. Our, you know, our hair, what we're wearing. We collaborated with all the departments of, like, what's hair going to be like in the future? What are gender roles in the future? You know? And that was, that was sort of a fascinating process for me. Because for character actors, you don't really get to... The, to give that kind of input so early in the process. It's not the same, but it's not distracting which is what I like about the, 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 the wardrobe of the future in this. Yes, yeah. And the, the jokes about what people wear still <laughs> sort of feel particular to right now in a way. Like Josh Gad is like a, well, uh, a, a super wealthy, lazy man baby wearing like velvet sweatsuits yeah. makes sense now and will continue to be probably the same <laughs> in the future. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's what Armando said. It's like, it's, it's not science fiction, right? The show isn't science fiction. It's not like this is what the world is going to look like. And his example is like in 1980, it, it wasn't that much different than today. The cars looked a little different, and now we have Wi-Fi. That's, that's kind of like the only different, but it, difference, but everything else is the same. More bell bottoms. That's a 70s. Late 70s, early 80s. Late, yeah. If, yeah, like 1980. They were still, they, they, people were still they're rocking those big bell bottoms. <laughs> yeah. But now they're like, back. Are they? <laughs> like flare. Flare. Super flare. Yeah. In 2006. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> in my high school in 2001. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the other thing, too. Do, uh, old things coming back. So, like, you can't see it in this picture, but Iris wears a, a, a corset, basically, yeah. like a waspy. This, this idea that something. That, that seemed dated is back again. Well, and also, it, I guess I imagine for you, is an, it, it sort of tightens you up. Oh, it fits the character for sure. Yeah. It's actually great for my posture. And this idea that Iris would never slouch, 
you know, and that she's always at the ready and she's always poised in a certain way it really helps. Are help you a sloucher? Me. I'm a sloucher. I'm who's not a sloucher. I, people tell me not to slouch, and I'm like, who are you? How do you not do that? I don't understand. I did notice something really interesting about wearing this corset. Is that you conserve so much energy when you sit correctly. Really? Yeah. So at the end of the day, I'm energized. I'm not tired. Because, like, wait, look, when you... Wait, I just touched my mouth to the mic. I just touched my mouth to the mic. You're going to get it. <sighs> well, should we... Oh, my God, I see the lips. Well, I don't think we need to clean the, ma the mic now. We need to clean... You. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Don't lick my lips. I, just I think it. you're fine. Uh, so when you slouch, you're using muscles to, like, hold your... You're, you're holding your head up. You're holding... Right, oh, yeah. but if you're if you sit correctly, you're basically like balancing this ball on a stick, and you use the least amount of energy. But there's the whole push your shoulders back thing that I feel like, like don't you? Feel you don't this? look comfortable at all. No, this is not a natural <laughs> posture for me. This is kind of my natural posture. Yeah, right? but if you were if, if you were wearing a corset right now, you would not it would use look so hot. You would not. You would look so hot, <laughs> and you would not. Basically, be wasting any energy, energy holding yourself up because you're just sort of balancing. Wait, I want to wear a corset. That I know. sounds great. It's the best. You're I didn't the think the first woman I've ever spoken to has, who has told me oh, the corset is the best. It's not a corset corset. It's a what they call it a waspy. It's like a half corset, but it's really great. Do you think that it is revisionist history to think women in Victorian times that had to wear corsets didn't like them? Because anytime I talk to someone who comes in and who was played apart from that time, it's like, oh, and think like women had to wear these corsets and we're all like, oh, that's so terrible. But what if they liked it? Because they looked at men and they were like, you short duds, you look like <laughs> shit. Like, I got straight back. Corsets are different because, you know, it was to make waist slimmer to be more appealing ideally to the opposite sex or to men or, or to whoever. Of course. But if you did it for yourself, it's a different, it's a little empowering. Yeah. Like if you wore a waspy f so that you can come off powerful and conserve energy. I love this idea for energy con conservation. Yeah. I might pick up a corset. <laughs> it's really, really great. Are there men's corsets? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Or like, don't they have like men's spanks? Who, I who am I asking? <laughs> call them. Call them. Are there men's? Are there spanks? men's spanks? Uh, uh, we have a question from Twitter. Actually, it's uh, what's it been like being one of Armando's repeat players and working with the likes of Hugh Laurie? This oh, is Sid here. Star Avenue Five Stan at Veep Throat. Throat. Big fan. <laughs> uh, I love. Working with Armando. Am I considered a repeat player? I guess so, because of Veep. Um, I, I think anyone... I Everyone likes to work with people that they're familiar with, they could have a shorthand with, they, they, you know, that understands them. So I, I hope I'm one of those people. Because I want, you know, because if um, Armando surrounds himself with people that are similar to each other and similar, you know, same sense of humor. So I would love to be included in, I don't know if I am a repeat player, but I would love to continue. How about that? And uh, I love Hugh Laurie. You love Hugh Laurie. I love Hugh Laurie. And this, this is what we don't understand here in the United States. He's a comedy guy. Yeah. Um, what was the name of his group or his show? Fry and Laurie. Yeah, Fry and Laurie. That's right. So Stephen he's Fry. from Sketch. He's from, he's, he's like a second city. He would, if he's like the UK second city guy. But then he comes over here and does a drama for eight years, and that's how Americans know him. Yeah. But you can tell that he's in his element when when you're playing with him. When he's playing a, a, a Iannucci-esque fool. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's so present, and he's you know like he's the he he knows how to throw focus. He knows how to make your joke better. He knows it. It's wow. like it's. He has that instinct. It's really what's, wonderful. What's so interesting about his character in this, uh, in regards to the Iannucci sort of fooly, fools trying to show, show that they're not, is that while he's the straight man in a way, he's also the only one who recognizes that he is dumber than everybody thinks he is. <laughs> yeah. Whereas everybody else is trying to pretend 
to be what they think they are. He is the one person who is trying to alert everybody that he is not what they think yes. he is. Yeah, and it's and he can play that, right? He plays yeah. so many levels of the someone who's in control and not in control, hiding that he's not in control, revealing that he's, you know, the, all that. Yeah. It's, and it, that's where the comedy comes from. It's, he's really fun to watch. What has it been like? I mean, at this point, you are a series regular on Avenue 5. You guys are done shooting it, I'd, I'd imagine? Yes. You're done? We finished, yeah, last late last year. Oh, you finished late last year, so Not you've been lately. done for a, a yeah. while, right? And yeah. you've just been watching the episodes as they come out? Yeah, and the season finale is next Sunday. Season finale is next Sunday? Is this Sunday. On HBO? Coming Sunday. This coming Sunday on HBO? Yes. And what do you have? You have some stuff coming out after that as well, right? Uh... Uh, yes, I'm. Well, I have. I've done like guest stars and that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. <laughs> Avenue Five. The season finale is this Sunday mm -hmm. on HBO. And then Wednesday on Sky One in the UK. And then Wednesday on Sky One in the UK. Yeah. Susie, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm glad that we were able to fix the button. That was. Um, and I'm glad that you have convinced me to maybe wear a corset. Yeah, we should go waspy shopping after this. At the waspy store. Uh huh. With Bloomingdale's, basically, right? Probably. I think did. something like it's that. It's a small section. Of course, it's for men's section. Mm -hmm. It's one. It's one course. What do they? What do they call them? Mansets. Mansets. I think that's it. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's about right. Right. Mosbies. <laughs> no, let's not. Let's not spitball on that one. Coursers. Something just like harsh, yeah, you know, like C O U R. Yeah. Corsher or like crushers, sure, crushers, yeah. right? Or corsets, but but spelled coarse. Like, hey man, are you wearing a corset? No, that's a crusher. It's a. It's fine. Yeah. Susie Nakamura. Cut to me tying you up. <laughs> Just make it crush a little bit more for me, please. <laughs> Susie, thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure talking Thanks to you. Thanks for having me. Thank you.